Hello everyone, welcome to Marine's World with another flower tutorial. This time I'm using some silk ribbon and right at the end I've been out in the garden and done a little garden update for you all. It's looking very yeah in the need of a lot of work and I thought maybe by filming it and showing you it would encourage me out into the garden. I hope you enjoy watching it. I'm about to start my next flower page and I'm going to do foxgloves. So there's not many supplies for today. I've got my book. I'll just put B down because she's on my knee. Um, I've got the wool skirt and the bit of velvet that I've just been using on the little wren page. And I've got these bits of ribbon. Now, it's not silk ribbon. So this is polyester ribbon. It's not as soft as real silk ribbon, I'm sure, but it's what I've got. Anyway, I did a little uh, mock-up of the size of my page. i uh, drawn them on with a pencil. So I'm going to embroider the stems, cut out some leaves, and then I'll start with the ribbon and show you exactly how to get a really lovely looking foxglove using some polyester ribbon that's not even the right colour but that's the colour I've got. I've pulled some of the greens that I've got out of my tangle because it's a good way of using some of these short bits of thread up and I've cut out just some teardrop shapes from the wool skirt and the little bit of velvet that I've got and that's all they really are just teardrop shapes in various sizes that I think I'll fit on. I might need more, I might not need all of them, but just I've got two strands of this greyish green in my needle and I'm going to running stitch up my marked stem. I really like to do stems this way. For one thing it's quite quick and for another it just makes a really nice line. With embroidering on the fabric that's already been bonded for the book, uh, it's a little more stiff to put your needle through but the benefit is that it doesn't really crease and pull up so you're not in any danger of over pulling your embroidery even though you're working in the hand. So I'm going to get right up to the top and I'm immediately coming out just to one side of my last stitch, doesn't matter which side and I'm going to whip back down just by putting the needle underneath every running stitch as I come back down and as I say it doesn't matter at all which way round you run but it makes a lovely line and I really I really like doing stems this way and you can see how easy that is to get a, a quick stem so I'm going to do that with the other two you can see how nice that that's come out as a stem now I whipped back up the last stem with a different colour in my needle but I'm still just on two strands and I'm going to start and put the buds, the unopened buds at the top with just uh, some French knots so, so I'm just going to do a two wrap French knot right in at the very top oops I've picked up all my stuff just move that out of the way a minute Just a two wrap French knot made right down at the fabric. I'm just sort of going to alternate each side of the point is I can't do it with just one hand there. A two wrap French knot. Pull it tight down onto the fabric so that you know you're going to get a nice neat French knot when it's pulled. Put them quite close together while they're at the top of the stem. Pull the knot down, pull your thread through 
and then you can if you want try and make a bigger French knot as you come down so I'll just do this as the last two wrap and then I'll make a three wrap French knot a bit further I'll leave a little space and make a three wrap one just to make a bigger hopefully make a bigger one as I'm coming down the stem do that again one two three back down almost in the same place and pull through I'm going to do quite a few on here because I don't need as many open flowers on this stem I don't think and there we go so a nice a nice start to the graceful foxgloves and then I'm going to start here and work up the stem try and make some bigger ones to the bottom and smaller ones as you get up my French knots are finished and I'm about to just put some leaves onto the bottom so I can get a sense of the scale and so I'm just going to put a group of these little teardrop shaped leaves on the bottom and the way I'm doing that I've got a couple of strands I'm going to come up at the point of one of my leaves I'm going to anchor it down with a running stitch come back up and instead of stitching the whole thing down I'm just going to running stitch along the the leaf rib but just in the actual piece of fabric itself like that so it's actually still loose at the moment and then I can actually manipulate that a bit if I don't want it to be totally flat on the page which usually I don't so I'm just going to curl that up a little bit and go back down again. And you can see that it keeps keeps the shadow there and it makes it, I don't know, I just, I just like it better. So I'm going to come up next. I'll do the same with this velvet leaf down onto the leaf. I'm only using these velvet ones at the bottom because they fray a bit too much to make the small leaves. I pull my running stitch through and then I can what I can do because of that is I can sort of manipulate that and get it to be exactly where I want it to be and I'll put it here and do the same for another do a, in fact I don't even have to have it down on the on the page I can just running stitch up the leaf and slide it down my thread until it's where I want it to be and then decide exactly where I'm going to anchor it down and I'm just going to work my way make a little cluster of leaves here so I've finished doing the base leaves and I had a little bit of thread left in my needle I never like to waste thread ended up with a few straight stitches for grass which I'll carry on on the other side eventually but of course the main attraction has to be the foxglove flowers this is a bit of four millimeter ribbon I don't have the right color for foxgloves in fact there's I've actually got three different colors here I'm going to just start off by tying a knot in the end I don't not quite know how anybody else does it but nobody's ever trained me I just I just find my own way to do things so I'm going to put a knot right in the very end of there and I'm going to come up on my main flower and I'm going to start with some French knots and they're just exactly the same but I'm actually just going to do a one wrap and go back down and I'm just going to carefully hold that knot in while it goes through. Now it'll be hard to pull through this because I'm on the I'm on the bonded fabric, but it'll work. And there we have the first French knot that looks like a, a foxglove bud. I'm going to do another couple of them as I'm coming down the stem. So it up. And just make sure I'm not leaving loops on the back. And exactly the same as a normal French knot but I'm just doing a one wrap because I want these to be quite small at the moment 
they're just going to be absolutely perfect. I'll do two wraps. You can see how much bigger that's made it. And I think now I need to start and put some actual flowers in as I'm working down the stem. So I'm still going to use this piece of ribbon and <clears throat> I'm going to do what's called ribbon stitch. So I'm going to hold this as high as I can while I do it. And ribbon stitch just means you've come up with your ribbon. I'm going to lie it so it's flat and the length of my flower I'm going to just say that and I'm going to poke my needle through that ribbon to anchor it down and as it goes down it's going to curl the edge back up and I'm going to leave it curled up. I'm not going to pull that stitch all the way through because that's how I'm making my foxglove look like a foxglove and I'm going to do another one of them and that little curled up end is going to make the lip of the foxglove. I've changed this bit of 7mm ribbon and I'm going to do the exact same stitch. So I'm just coming up slightly down and to the other side of my stem. I'm going to make the exact same stitch that I did before. I'm just going to lie the ribbon where I think I want my flower and put the point of the needle back in and let it roll the ribbon. And I've actually changed my needle to a bigger eye to allow the ribbon to get through the fabric. So as you can see that's rolling, it's rolling the, the ribbon back up and I'm just going to stop when I feel that roll is just exactly right for the foxglove. I'll do that again on this side. I'm going to come up slightly down into the other side of my stem pull through, put my ribbon where I think I want the flower to be and poke through needle and just pull that through nice and gently watching how it rolls up and stopping where I feel I need to stop. I'm just finishing the last foxglove now and as you can see I've got an even different colour ribbon on now which is 7mm. I did try the 10 millimeter ribbon that is all I've got of it I don't have any more but it was just too big for this scale of flower so I'm using what I've got and I'll link it to my original stitch book where I did a foxglove page and I didn't have the ink tents to colour it then which I do now and which is what I'll be using today I just used cheap artist's acrylic paint which is what I've always done I've just used what I had a bit of cheap paint from the hardware store or from the art shop. Uh, nothing special, nothing particularly wonderful. Just what I could get hold of. I still got tons of them. Water it down, use it to colour your fabric. There is absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. And I get just as good effects really. It's just now I'm lucky enough to be able to buy the ink tents and I love using them. But I'm not necessarily saying that it did any better than the effect that I got when I just used the acrylic paint and by all means go and have a look at that video where I did the little walkthrough of the pages and the one with the foxgloves in it you'll see how pretty that turned out and I didn't have I was just using the same ribbons as I've got here and I was using acrylic paint to colour them so don't let not having the right things put you off from just achieving things and using what you've got. And I think that's starting to come together really nicely. It's looking like a good page so far. There's still some things to do. I've changed to a single thread of green in my needle and I'm going to work down each stem. And I'm just going to come up at the top of the flowers, top of each individual flower, and I'm just going to put one stitch in some of them, just so that's the calyx. And it just all adds for realism as you're trying to make your embroidery just look that little bit extra all the time. So again, I'm just going to look at the difference that one little stitch makes as I'm coming down the flower. And as I get to these bigger ones, actually going to do three stitches. So I'll put one there 
and go back up to there. And I think that really makes such a difference. I'll just do sometimes I'll just do two and sometimes I'm going to do three. Look at the difference from that to these ones that don't have that on. And I'm going to work down the others in the same manner. Now I've actually finished the bit of embroidery and I'm ready to amend the colour with the paint and also to do my writing on and because this is a bonded page I thought I'd actually rather do that next so I am going to iron these together and then I can sew around and then I'll be able to do the painting and put my writing on I've got two strands of soft cotton in my needle I've done a running stitch all the way around and Instead of just whipping it like I normally do, I'm actually just doing an in and out like that to make a wave. Just like I did on my slippers a few weeks ago. So I'm not going through the fabric this time, I'm just going under back and forward from the running stitch. And it makes a really pretty pattern, which I can go back the other way if I want and make it look like a little chain. It also means that this page has been finished as well now because I couldn't finish that edge until this embroidery was done. So I'm ready now to do the magic of putting some colour on here. So I am just using my ink tents with quite a watery bit of a pink that I've mixed up and I'm just going to use my little brush and just touch the ribbon and let the water just go in. It won't go into the background but by this way I'm going to get the colour better. In fact I need to pick that up so I can see it properly and just sort of drip it onto the top. Now I don't want it to come all the whole way down because I want that pale edge and in my other book with the foxglove being maybe double this size I actually put the open bell on with some cotton and some dark little spots for the inside of the foxglove but this is just too small to have done that so I'm going to hope that just making the colour is going to make a difference here so all of a sudden these are looking a definite a lot more foxglove colour than that pale pink. I know you can get foxgloves in all colours under the sun now, but my absolute favourites are still the wild ones. They're so graceful. I love them in my garden. I feel it's easier to paint the ribbon once it's embroidered. And I think if I was going to buy some silk ribbon, I'd probably just buy plain white or cream so that I could colour it in to make it more natural once I'd embroidered. But it depends what sort of embroidery you're doing. With me, it's nearly always sort of natural looking flowers. I'm trying to keep the little curled back part still pale for the inside. I think that seems fine. And see how all those three different colours actually ended up being okay. And I think while I'm on, I'm just going to take a little bit of green. and just give a bit more weeds. I was going to put a bit more ribbon embroidery but I decided not to. 
wanted the focus to be on the fox gloves. Okay, just about. You see how that dries. If it needs a bit more thickening up or darkening down, I'll put some more paint on. I think I always just think, put on whatever makes it what I don't think oh I'm I'm painting today or I'm embroidering today. I do whatever whatever I can do to make the page whatever I want it to end up being. Anyway, I think that's my embroidery done. I'm ready now to do my writing and I've just it's just something I've written myself. Uh, I was just thinking while I was doing it of how stately and graceful they were. And so I've planned my writing out and it says foxglove flowers in stately spires adorn my garden with grace. And so I think that's the way it's going to be. I did it just on a long line of paper and I've cut it up to just plan it out. So if I start there and hopefully that's what I'll be able to do. So I'm going to do that now. Okay. Okay, I think I think that's fine by me. Just I all of a sudden decided that I wanted to paint in the writing. And so I have taken the same pink that I used for them to paint in Grace and Foxglove. And I'm just using this green to touch the other the other um, letters with and I'm just colouring in the way that I've left a little opening in the letters but it's just a bit different from what I've been doing before and I really like it I think it's turning out nice I haven't got much water on my brush because I don't want it to bleed through but it's given a nice effect, just adding that little bit to this simple page. It's the first time I've done any writing with colour on it. But actually now I'm wondering why I didn't do it before. That's why you should never stop experimenting. Because you come up with things... And what's the worst that could happen? I won't like it. And then I I can cover it up or I can leave it and do something different the next time. Yeah. It doesn't even bother me that that's not straight. It's perfectly fine. Now oh, that colour there is really... It's really added something to me anyway. That's going in my book. I'll just close that. And say... That the latest page of foxgloves is actually finished. And though it started off quite simple, it's ended up looking really pretty. I thought I'd finish today by just showing you how the garden's doing. It's definitely changing, the colours are changing. There's autumn's here. Look at the gorgeous colours on that, it's beautiful. That's a plant called Aronia. It does get edible berries, but I think the birds have had them already. These are slowly getting a bit better in my old horse trough. I've got a rusty nest there. Oh, actually, I got it from my husband. And through the window you can see the Viking ship. Everything is definitely looking what we always used to say when we were garden. It's looking back-endish. There's still thrift in flower. 
even though there's plenty of seed heads on it too, and roses. This one's looking particularly pretty in front of the dogwood. Up the top of my garden, it's quite hard to walk up because I haven't cleared the path. But these beautiful fuchsia look very elegant. And as I go up, we've still got roses that are opening. And the sedum that's in flower. And this glorious aster, which is taking over my path. But it's really elegant and pretty. And I've forgotten the name. But it's... How tall is it? It's four foot tall. This is me putting my hand out at shoulder level. That's how tall it is. There'll be a lovely display when these turn orange. So they're not quite there yet. There's still harebells. They were nearly going to be in my book. In fact, they might be in my book. The poor holly needs a prune. It's supposed to be it's supposed to be a lollipop, a standard ball, and, oh dear, I need the secateurs on it. Here's some lovely autumn colour. Look at the colour of those berries. That stinking iris, or iris fatidata. They're really beautiful. The flowers are just really brown and mauve. The whole interest is the autumn. Beautiful geraniums, anemone, wild swan. This beauty is called Lady Gardener. This is David Austin. Peeking through the undergrowth are the berries of lords and ladies. We can see the lovely variegated leaves. Well, that's Aera Metallicum. I'm afraid it's all desperate for its autumn cut down. This cream hydrangea is now properly turned red. The birds are singing. And I think I'm just going to leave it there for you and say thank you for watching my videos and thank you for subscribing. My little Wren video has really done so well. I'm pleased you've all enjoyed it. And so I'm going to say bye from Marion's World until next time. And thank you everybody so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And when I do next get out in the garden, for a bit of gardening, I'll be sure to give it a film. See you next time. Happy crafting.